Welcome to Real Foot Forward, a West Tennessee podcast from Discovery Park of America in Union City, Tennessee. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends at Leaders Credit Union. Thank you, Zach. Welcome to Real Foot Forward, a West Tennessee podcast where we explore the history, the people, and the culture of our home here in West Tennessee. I'm your host, Scott Williams. Okay, Zach, before I introduce today's guest, what's something you've discovered this week at Discovery Park of America? Not really at Discovery Park, but I was trying to turn on Daniel Tiger for my kids recently on PBS and actually saw something on there from Tennessee Crossroads where... Joe Elmore uh, was interviewing Vic Wood in the, on our cabins. That was a very fun day we had here. Uh, the cabin project was a big one for us last year. That's actually a rerun uh, that I ran across the other day as well while I was uh, changing channels. The cabin project pretty much uh, turned that whole area around, um, and it is incredible today. Uh, we're actually using one of the cabins uh, that was re remodeled for Duck Duck Goose Waterfowl of the Mississippi Flyway that opens um, in November. So uh, it's a uh, fun aspect of Discovery Park checking out those cabins that came from all over um, the region. So that was a good one. So our special guest today is Hannah Perigen. Uh, she um, is the reigning Miss Mississippi volunteer, but also won Miss Volunteer America 2024. Congratulations. Thank you so much. So um, were you uh, surprised? Did you think you did you think you had it in the bag? Tell, tell us a little bit about that moment. Yes. So when I was crowned Miss Mississippi volunteer a year and a couple months ago, I was one of the first, and so I actually served as a state title holder for a very long 11 months, but that those 11 months, that was me preparing to compete at nationals, and so when, once I got there, I knew that I wanted to have everything done prior so that I could just enjoy the moment, and I like to say, be where my two feet were, mm -hmm. um, and Looking back at the at my time at Miss Volunteer America, I'm very happy to say that I was able to really soak in every small moment. And so when it got came to when it came to finals night and they announced my name as the winner, I walked over to Alexa, who was last year's Miss Volunteer America, the first ever actually. And I think I told her, I said, I cannot breathe. And she kind of giggled. I said, no, I can't breathe. What just happened? Because your life truly does change within seconds. And, you know, they pulled me off stage and um, Scott was giving me my, my reading points to address the crowd and they were fixing my hair and makeup. And and in that moment, I knew um, it, it's kind of like the year flashed before me and I'm, I'm excited. And so we're two months in now and um, we've got, you know, some more work to do. Well, back us up a little bit and tell me a little bit about uh, your past. Where where did you grow up? Uh, where, where, where's home for you? So I grew up in Columbus, Mississippi, and I actually did not grow up competing in pageants. You know, my mom would put me in a school pageant here and there. But when I got to the University of Mississippi, they have a pageant called Parade of Beauties. And my sorority actually nominated me to compete. And I competed for three years and was crowned Ole Miss Most Beautiful 2019. And that was when people started knocking on my door and said, hey, look, you need to keep going. And so I explored some different paths and different organizations. And that was when I started competing at the state level. And I actually competed in a different organization. Miss Volunteer America didn't exist at the time, so it wasn't an option. Um, but a different organization where I came really close to winning quite a few years. And I almost gave up competing in pageants because I just thought that that wasn't God's plan for my life. And Miss Volunteer America was going into year two and Team Mississippi came up to me and said, hey, you would be really great at this, you know, give it a shot. And I was terrified, but I knew if I didn't try the answer, 
is always no if you don't try it something. And so I signed up a month before Miss Mississippi Volunteer, and um, it just goes to show you that, you know, I, I'm spiritual, and I believe if you if you have that faith, you know, he'll never lead you astray, because if something's meant for you out there, it's going to happen. Um, not one person or thing can stop that for you, but um, something that I sort of promote, it, I do promote because it's my platform, it's called Defined by Me. And I named my platform that because I grew up in circumstances where I very easily could have been another statistic. Um, for example, you know, I was raised by a single mom. We relied on government assistance. Did you have any siblings? I have a little brother, Nicholas, um, who turns 18 in a couple of days. Oh, and so he's, he's younger than I am. But um you know, I, I grew up in those circumstances, which is why I never thought I could be a queen and have a crown. But I knew that when I was given this platform, I needed to advocate for those at-risk youth that that were in the same shoes that I was in when I was younger. I, I want them to know that there is a light at the end of the tunnel, that you do not have to be defined by your circumstances, but you're defined by the choices that you make every single day. And that's why I'm standing here right now. And it seems like things are getting worse and worse and worse. So, Absolutely. So it's really an important time for you to do that. Um, mm -hmm. So you, what, you didn't plan when you were a little girl on being a princess. What did you think you, what, what were your plans when you were a little girl? What did you want to be when you grew up? I, I, so I grew up dancing, which is um, my talent for Miss Volunteer America. And so um, I remember I would watch pageants with my mom and she would always tell me, you know, you could, that could be you, Hannah, and you never believe it in the moment. Um, so I don't know if I ever had an actual dream. One of my greatest accomplishments, though, was going to college. And I was a first generation college student. And so I went to the University of Mississippi and I graduated in four years. And when I accomplished that, I knew that the sky was the limit for me. And that was prior to winning a state title. That was prior to winning Miss Mississippi Volunteer. And so, again, that was another motivator in competing in this scholarship organization because I could I had the possibility of winning ten thousand dollars if I were to win Miss Mississippi. And that happened. And so my student debt was completely wiped. Mm, and um, that's nice. You can't you can't yeah. put a price on that. It's. I like to say as if a brick were lifted off of my chest oh, of because course. I was no longer constrained and limited from that debt. Yeah, the crown is cool, but the, the debt relief is even better. It is. And the national title holder, she wins another 50000 So That's nice. What was your major? Um, business and psychology. What do you want to do with it? So I actually work in marketing. Um, okay. So I... Love fitness. Uh, that's a whole other thing that I promote. Hashtag strong, not skinny. But um, I started and in the fitness industry as a personal trainer. And I uh, would, I had dinner with my boss and I'm good at social media. I'm 25 years old, you know, woman. I, I'm good at it. It's natural. Right. And so I said, hey, if you ever need any help with social media, I'm your girl. About a month later, um, she said, hey, we, we need some content to push out on Instagram. And I said, absolutely, I'll, I'll do it. And I sort of just stepped into that position and, you know, didn't ask any questions, just kind of worked hard and just over the past two years kept being promoted. And now I'm the marketing director for the entire investment group that owns 17 Anytime Fitnesses across the Southeast. And oh, so, that's very nice. Yep, I work in marketing, yeah. so I don't technically use my degree, but um, just having that bachelor's degree, I feel like, you know, to be able to compete with other individuals in 2024, it, it's important for someone like myself who came from the past that I did. Well, most of the people I know don't use whatever they majored in. Mm -hmm. they, they're doing something completely different. Um, the, getting your degree was the most important Absolutely. thing. And I mean, social media, how do you feel like, obviously, um, I am older than 25. And so I've been using social media for a long time. Uh, I've seen it evolve through the years. How do, how do you think it will evolve from now going forward? I know there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of uh, 
you know, chatter about TikTok being mm-hmm. bad and, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, about young girls and how it influences them in a negative way. Um, and so there's a lot of chatter about that. Um, you know, most of the negative chatter comes from people that probably don't even use social media. So mm-hmm. as somebody who uses social media, um, what do you think the evolution will be? A few things. So I think that it's it's the now and it's the entire future. Um, it's funny that you bring up people speaking negatively on social media because it can be bad. But so in Miss Volunteer America, if you don't know, um, top five get they get asked an on stage question mm. in front of the entire audience. And like I said, I'm spiritual and I kind of just was trusting that, you know, whatever my question was, I would speak from the heart. And Allison DeMarcus, the founder of Miss Volunteer America, she's reading the question and it's about social media. Oh, like, okay. This is my, this is yeah. my moment. And it, she was asking about, you know, using it for good or using it for bad. And, and that was when, um, God laid on my heart to bring up, I promote the hashtag strong, not skinny. And so I use social media for good. It, it's a platform for me to showcase the good, but also the bad, because we're all human. Um, You know, people like to say it's a highlight reel and and it is, but it doesn't have to be. And I think that we're slowly starting to see that you have lots of influencers now um, in the world who are showcasing their day to day lives and and they are successful because that's what people relate to the most um, because they are viewing them as a human and not just, um, you know, placing them on a pedestal. And so. I say all that to say that social media is very important, especially during this year for me as Miss Volunteer America, because I want every girl to know that this can be her. She can wear the crown and I'm not just going to share the good. I'm going to share the bad. It's it's a long year. Um, nothing good ever comes easy. Um, I, I love to live by quotes, but it's 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 great and it's hard, but I will share all of it, um, especially on social media, because um, like I said, I want every girl to know that you don't have to grow up a specific way. Um, you can be an at-risk youth and you can still still achieve greatness. Fantastic. Well, we're going to take a quick break and when we get back, I'm going to ask you a little bit more about the contest itself. Yes. With nine branches in West Tennessee and nationwide ATM and branch access, you can take leaders with you wherever you go. From checking accounts, credit cards, home loans, and their state-of-the-art mobile app, Banking with Leaders can help you move forward. Learn more and see how you can qualify for membership at LeaderCU.com. I hope you're enjoying the Real Foot Forward podcast from Discovery Park of America. If you are, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and leave a positive review on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Um, Tell us a little bit. When we left, you were telling us a little bit about the contest itself. I'm curious... Uh, this is a little bit different than the Miss America pageants of old that we used to watch on TV. If you're as old as I am, you know, when you were a little kid, uh, there's a lot more, a lot more substance to it, as I understand. Tell us a little bit more about the contest and how you prepare. Right. So you, you've seen the evolution of Miss America and a lot of people reference Miss Volunteer America as old school Miss America um, in in the way that the competition is actually set up. So there's different phases of competition. Uh, I spent an entire week in Jackson, Tennessee, where the national pageant is held, and it was the best week of my life. But you compete in fitness and wellness, um, which is swimsuit, as you may know. Um, You also compete in private interview, you have talent, you have evening gown. And so all of these phases are scored equally. And I think that that's the beauty of Miss Volunteer America because the girl that's going to win or the girl that is successful or even prepared for the national pageant, you have to be a well-rounded woman and you don't have to just succeed in talent, but you have to be able to present yourself eloquently in, a, in an evening gown. Um, you have to be able to public speak in front of thousands of individuals and answer a question that may be hard. And 
through that, you grow. As I said, I served as Miss Mississippi Volunteer for 11 months, and it was a hard 11 months, but it's because I wanted to be the very best version of Hannah possible. And through that, you have to prepare for all phases of co- phases of competition. But like you said, pageantry has changed in the year of 2024. Um, now you have a platform to speak. So I, just as I'm sharing with you now, I'm going to share my story. I do not think that I was given this platform um, for me to just, you know, glide through my year and, and not make an impact. Even if just one individual hears my message and it changes their life, then my work does not go in vain. So, um, I, I noticed where you just gave, uh, or you were just, or at least this news article that I was reading back in June, uh, you were in Tupelo. Um, I love Tupelo. Okay. Uh, I used to work for Elvis Presley Enterprises. And of course we worked very closely with the Tupelo team. Yeah. Um, Tupelo is a great town. It is. How far away is it from your hometown? I'm from Columbus. So it's about an hour. And then where I'm at now in Oxford, Mississippi, which is the tip of Mississippi. Oh, sure. Yeah. It's an hour. It's all North Mississippi, but Tupelo is where Miss Mississippi is held. Miss Mississippi volunteer. Okay. And so that's where I was crowned at the state level. Yeah. That's we a got, great town. Mm-hmm, we got to tour his birthplace and you know, I didn't know that Elvis had a twin. Yes, he did. I yeah, didn't know that until I toured. Yeah. I'm telling you, I, I like to yeah. soak it all in. Yeah, you did. You learned so say <laughs> you do did. like to read all the I all do. things. Um and then so you're in Oxford now. Mm-hmm. T- give us a, a restaurant tip. Where should we go eat when we're in Oxford? So Jin Say okay. is I love their sushi. It's a Japanese style restaurant. Okay. It's right off of the square, the historic mm-hmm. Oxford sure. Square. Yeah, I love Oxford too. It's, Oxford's great. Bookstores. It's and, a fabulous yeah. place. When I decided to go there for college, my mom did not question it twice because it has that old town home family environment mm-hmm. but you still have you know all of the students and the excitement of football which just started up oh yes yeah, yeah. no a lot of my friends are all about it so yeah, yeah. i went to the the football game last saturday and it was what we would call a blowout against oh, mercer yeah. but it's, yeah. it's a and good the thing. tailgating they the tailgating do there. yeah, the there's party. chandeliers and yeah. it's it's just a grand time people dress oh, yeah. up to the nines and it's very much so me which is probably why i enjoy it now, how far away was that how far was oxford from your hometown two hours okay see that's perfect that's not too close but your mom i'm sure was very glad that you were close you enough. are right on the money yeah. I, it was just far enough to where i couldn't sporadically plan a weekend trip but if i needed to i could i could go home in case of an emergency you um, have to wash clothes and yes stuff like something that. like that mm-hmm. now, how old is your brother he he turns 18 September 9th. Is he a senior? He's a senior. Where is he going to go to college? So he is actually really talented in welding. Oh, and excellent. So, yeah, they, I, we didn't have this opportunity when I was at the same high school he's at now, um, New Hope, but the Votech, the vocational. Yeah. Um, he was actually able to take multiple classes in construction and welding. And he's really talented. Oh, that's great. And um, I think that that's so important as well because school is not for everyone. I know that I advocate and promote me being a first-generation college graduate, but it's not needed if you have skills elsewhere. Well, and we have uh, in this area a lot of opportunities for people who do welding, refrigeration. Mm-hmm. You know, all those uh, technical schools are begging for students, and the companies are begging for employees and paying really nice salaries really? for them. Awesome. So, so that's really good. That's really a good thing. Mm-hmm. Um, excellent. Well, what, what's next for you? I mean, I know this is probably very much time consuming and a lot of your brain power goes towards <laughs> this. When this is all over with and you pass that crown along, uh, what do you plan on uh, focusing on? You know, I don't have an exact plan. I'm never going to close any doors on myself because, you know, that's how I've gotten to this point is by not saying no. So every opportunity that comes my way, I'm going to be there. Um, I'm going to be present. I'm going to be networking because that's what pageants do for me. They bring about opportunities. And so I am 25 years old and this year, the the year as a state title holder and even the past two months as Miss Volunteer America have been so fulfilling. And that's something that I prayed for for a very long time is for my life to have purpose. And I I love meeting individuals and speaking to individuals. And it's something that I'm quite frankly good at. And I could see 
my life, um, you know, definitely revolving around making connections with individuals of some sort. And so I'm excited for the future. Um, I am anywhere and everywhere this year. I work remotely, so I'm hitting the road. I'm spending the entire day today in Union City, which is my very first time. I'm super excited. Yeah, great. And hopefully we'll be coming back. Absolutely. Before. We need yes. to get you back. Well, Claire's a great, Claire who's in here is a great example of a beauty queen who turned those skills into marketing PR, yeah. you know, here at Discovery Park. So maybe there's another Discovery Park out there for you. Maybe so. Um, where you can follow in Claire's fantastic footsteps. It so sounds like a really fun job. I think Claire's in a fun job. It's a very fun job. Yes, is we have a good time here. So I mean, I, you have a whole slide in Discovery Park. I just went down right. the slide. Yeah, <laughs> it was great. It's voted like the second best slide in the world. So it, it was yeah. great. I was I, going I really where fast. The first, you know where the first best slide is? I don't know either. <laughs> um, but I'm glad you got to go down the second yeah, best the slide. First one to ever come down there. Oh, there Mark you go. The history books. Excellent. Very <laughs> nice. So we'll have to make sure we put that picture on the timeline, <laughs> you know, for, for our 20th anniversary when we do a timeline. That's great. Well, thank you so much for coming and talking to us today. Thank you for having me. It's been wonderful. Fantastic. And thank you to all of you listeners who joined us today at Discovery Park of America. Our mission here is to inspire children and adults to see beyond. To plan an experience here for you and your family, visit discoveryparkofamerica.com. Mm-hmm.